I'm your host, Lord from Three. Joining me for the Rake of the Rookaloose, Chapter 10. Francine. Miss Francine, you must come at once. The door flying open, and the sound of Lily's voice in a panic sent you leaping off the bed. What is it? It's your parents. They're here. For a minute, you have a vision of your dad with his receding hairline and glasses, and your mom with her bright smiles and eyes just like yours. No. They're dead. Not even time travel can bring them back. Come along. We must hurry. I fear his grace is working himself into a, a, a dungeon. You're too stunned to figure out what she means. Before you know it, she's pushing you through the door into a room full of stairs as she waits outside. The man and woman on the couch are presumably your parents. Only they're not my parents. The woman lets out a cry and leaps up to throw her arms around you. Ah, ma felicity. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> you know how I hate French. <laughs> Let's try this, okay? Ma, ma, fille, presse, precious, ma, malena, este bien? Even if this isn't my family, it has to be Madeline's, which makes it mine in a way. And Gideon implied we could never be together if I didn't have one. I should ask her to let me go. The woman's grip is strangling. She whispering soggy and incompre incomprehensible French, which when isn't it? Into your shoulder. Um, ma'am, could you could you let me go? I can't breathe. She pulls back sharply, but only slightly offended. She stares into your eyes, her own brimming with tears. Her hand comes up to stroke your cheek, your throat tightens, and unshed tears sting your eyes. No one has touched me like that and Fifteen years. Madam Larrabee, if you could please sit down, we must determine how to proceed. You join Gideon and Perry on the other, set across from Monsieur and Madame Larrabee. Francine, Madeline, uh, the Larrabees here have made them some dreadfully frightful charges against my brother. Stare at him in alarm, but before you can ask what he means... Well, what are we to do, hmm? After the letter we received? Letter? We received a letter from Lord Hebelwood that you were taken from, uh, I'm on the Duke's land. Taken? As in kidnapped? Gideon tenses next to you, his fist curling defensively in his lap. Hmm. <laughs> Um, tell him what kind of kid it's be. Excuse my yawn. Oh, need to take a sip of coffee then. I don't know who this Lord Hibbleworth is, but I can assure you the Duke has been nothing but kind to me. Kinder than kind, in fact. You do not remember Lord Hibbleworth? No. Why should I? He is your betrothed. Oh, we... Oui. We made very specific arrangements. Betrothed. Your heart is pounding hard in your chest. Your defense of Gideon's honor seems to have bolstered him. His hand twitches on his knee as he longs to reach out and hold you. As I told you, Francine's memories have been much altered since the accident. You know, so Gideon doesn't even try to refer to you as Madeline. You see him in an appreciative smile. Whether she remembers or not is a relief. It is a fact I have the contract in hand. I can assure you, Hebrewworth has a copy as well. Gideon narrows his eyes. A contract. As in actual documentation? What sort of marriage requires a written contract? This is starting to sound a little Fifty Shades to me. Thank you. It sounds like shit, doesn't it? We can get along now. Uh, we, we have several for all of our girls. Uh, though, Madeline is our oldest, and she, if she defaults... All of your girls. 
Your stomach has fallen somewhere down into your shoes. So Madeline didn't just have a parents. She had sisters? I always wanted a sister. Not all sisters are nice, honey. We have two more. Younger? Madame Larrabee's eyes are kind. It's as if she's pleading with you to remember. Uh, what exactly are the terms of this contract that you seem so concerned about defaulting? Gideon's voice has gone hostile. Clearly, I'm missing something. You were being sold, basically, honey. It's okay. Indeed, many betrothals have been broken off for less than a memory loss, and to no more damage than wounded pride. I myself am responsible for more than a few. <laughs> God damn it, Fairy. Fairy grins and Gideon glares. Monsieur Larrabee has clenched his hands on his knees. His ruddy face has gotten even ruddier, and he's avoiding every eye. The terms of the contract are very specific. My daughters are, were raised in a convent. A convent, excuse me. But no one seems to understand the implication of this, he adds. To ensure their innocence. I should ask him if he means what I think he means. Stay silent. It is not so different from your girls here being chastised for marriage. Except from that my understanding of your practice is that there is a complete lack of explanation to the girls. Not even basic anatomy. Uh, they're led to the bedchamber like lambs to a slaughter. Welcome to the French, guys. You feel sick to your stomach. I'm glad Lily isn't here to hear this. That's barbaric. The difference is unimportant. I believe the fear of her duty may be causing my daughter to be untruthful. I do not believe this memory excuse. The fact remains that she owes the obligation to her family. Gideon boils from his chair in a storm of agitation. The fact remains that Francine was obviously running from Lord Hibblewort for a reason. And return her to him against her will would be nothing short of cowardly. I should tell them I make my own decisions, ask how we can get out of the contract. That's why they chose Hope Award. I don't think any of that matters. You make your own decisions. You spring to your feet as well. Whether or not it's cowardly, or whether or not you think I have an obligation, I make my own choices and decisions. I am not leaving Elden Manor. Mons. Monsieur Larrabee looks outraged. Gideon beams. You dead January English have ruined my Madeleine. What is uh, the other reason you chose Hebelwort, Monsieur Larrabee? He wrings his hands. He looks reluctant to voice it. The answer pops into your head. Because he was the highest bidder. Gideon stares at him in disgust. Exactly, you don't buy a woman, you don't own her. Regardless of the circumstance, it will not go ahead. I will not allow it. You have no say in the matter, monsieur. Madeleine is my property until married. She's your fucking daughter, man! I get it, I get it, I get it. 1800s had completely different standards, I'm just saying. Not if someone else were to claim her instead. I'm fairly certain I can unbid Lord Hippelward. Parachutes out of the seat as well. You exchange alarm looks. Uh, brother, wait one minute. Again, he turns on Perry. What is your opposition? Uh, my opposition is that I think you're about to purchase a bride. And that's my opposition too, if anyone cares. Gideon looks at you, crestfallen, but you shake your head. I'll reassure him by telling him I'm grateful to him, I care about him, it's not him, it's the principle of it. It's the principle. I'm sorry, Your Grace, but being purchased by you is no better than being purchased by him. Uh, precisely. Uh, which is why I propose an alternative. Proprietary demands that you cannot be a part of this situation. Gideon. Perry hooks his thumbs into his lap holes, flashing an impossibly white tooth grin. You clever mother! <laughs> I really like this guy. Like as he's as he's throwing up like obstinates, he's like, but wait, there's more. But I can. Every jaw in the room drops. Oh goddammit. 
For a horrified moment, you think Perry is about to buy you as his bride, but Perry draws himself up as full height and stares down. Monsieur Lurabelle. Monsieur Lurabelle, I'm here to break your arrangement with Lord Hippelward. I will make preparation with him under two conditions. The first, that you break all arrangements for all of your daughters. And the second, that I serve as their guardian. What does he... They will come to England. I will provide their education, dowry, and a proper consensual marriage. My lord, you cannot... Uh, the girls are already promised. Not for long. Monsieur Larabelle, you cannot possibly think there is a better arrangement. You will receive all money you so desperately require. The girls will be taken care well care of, and better than under your supervision, I dare say. And the abdominal swords you sold them to will be left wanting. A perfect solution. The mother has gone silent. Staring at her hands, she clearly has no objection. Monsieur Larrabee huffs and puffs, but eventually throws up his hands. We are the French! We give up that easily! We! I can see no other choice. Wonderful! And Perry claps his hands and beams at the group. Now, who else wants a drink? <laughs> I like him! Holy shit, I like him! That night, you lay in bed staring at the darkened canopy you've been tossing and turning for hours. I escaped one arrangement and went straight into another. You try to find it in yourself to be mad at Perry for what he's done, but I cannot change the times. And at least this way, I'm not some virginal chattel being sold at a market. Though, not for Gideon's lack of trying. You can't be mad at Gideon, either. He wanted to marry me. It may have been under duress, but I think he meant it well. I didn't even thank him, just stormed up to my room as soon as the contracts were signed and the Larrabees were off. I should thank him now. Stand back. Roll on your side. Squeeze your eyes shut. He got upset. A, a little bit of ankle. If I snuck into his room, he'd probably send me back to the Larrabees. Still, it's nice to know I still have him on my side. Him and his scowls. Comforted by the thought, you drift off to sleep and let dreams of Gideon carry you all the way to dawn. Okay, I like Perry. I mean, I like Gideon, too, but I like Perry. Perry's actually pretty badass. He's like, I'll buy them all. Let's do this. Let's go. I'd buy them all, and I'll actually treat them like women. Um, that's pretty awesome, actually. Um, with that being said, so we're done for the Rake and Recluse this week. As you can see there. Um, make sure to always, when you're in the in Chapters app, make sure to always come down here. Hit your free roar. So, um, I'm going to take a short break. Get some more sips of coffee in me before we dive into either Court or Calendar Girl. I think I might dive into Court next. Um, but I'll, I'll decide by the time I'm done uploading chapter 10, and by the time I have a little, little bit more coffee. Without further ado, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below, links to social media, our Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. Without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.